All right, so here's the uh, Honda SH150, the Cannonball bike, 2023 Cannonball, Scooter Cannonball. So let's look at, let's do a quick update. Today is, um, today is the end of day five already. Um, so day two had a crash in a sand pit. And day four I had a crash on a dirt road, dirt gravel road in the mountains. It was a stupid crash too. Actually, the first crash was a stupid crash. Both crashes were stupid crashes. Uh, I should have known better on both of them, but you know, that's how shit is. Uh, so anyways, the first crash was a sand pit, so it was barely anything. It was just mostly dusty. Very minute scratches, but the second crash, um, that's the one that did all this damage. So you see the fenders all scratched up. Uh, there's a crack right here. Guys, can kind of can't tell, but there's a crack right there. Yeah, actually, look at the look at the glare, the reflection. You can see the the crack. It's like a wide crack. Um, let's see how it comes out right there. Um, and and both sides, it, I landed on the 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 left side over here. Right side, uh, I guess a few scratches here and there. I'm not sure from what. Uh, bike's real dirty. All right. Uh, my trunk actually no the trunk works okay my steering lock works funny so the steering lock after the second crash the steering lock before i could just put the key in and and switch it to uh to unlock without much effort but now and now i have to like kind of wiggle the handlebar a little bit or wiggle this a little bit to get it to uh to in, into the lock and un unlock position um so that that was the result after the crash i'm not sure why you know, because that shouldn't have anything to do with it unless, you know, unless something in the steering is not straight or something. But my steering feels perfectly straight. Uh, I don't feel anything even when, I, uh, when I'm at 50 miles an hour, 50 plus miles an hour, and I, and I let go, you know, no hands. And the bike track's straight. Straight and true. There's no wobble, no, nothing. And I just let it, you know, I just let go. And I, you know, and I just let it slow down all the way to like uh, 20 miles an hour, 15 miles an hour. And, it, and it's still straight and true and, and nothing wobbles. No, there's no there's no shaking head shake or anything like that so so i know the front end is fine uh so i'm not sure what stuff with that maybe that's somehow dirt or something got in there uh, that's possible you know it gunks it up a little bit you know like for example i have all these little rocks all these little rocks even a rock in here right I can't get this thing out i need to get a screwdriver or something popped it out but i got a little like you know little bits of little gravel and stuff with sand and everywhere so that that might be it jamming it up uh also probably from the crash as well you look here this is the airbox right uh you know that how the the modern engines they have the yeah, crankcase breather the crankcase breather goes out into the airbox so that way whatever crank gases come out from the crank uh crankcase breather goes into the airbox and the engine will suck it back in and burn that so that way it stays you know so the way it doesn't cause any pollution uh usually so so sometimes oil a little bit of oil mist comes out from there but uh my oil level is on this on the ground case breather tube is up right here already so that's a few you know that's a couple inches so that's quite a bit for uh, only a few thousand miles and you see oil coming dripping down right here too as well uh that's also you know same same thing um so so that's that's from actual crashing because it because it, it's sort of laid on the side for you know a few seconds and both times even when it was laying on the side the engine was still running actually the first time in the sand pit some some reason the the throttle got um, got pinned a little bit. I think it might have been my my Camelback because uh, my hand was was off of it already. I was already you know in the dirt, so I, the only thing that was here was my Camelback. So I think that Camelback might have um, and you know held the throttle a little bit, and the engine was revving on the side. It's revving, so so it's kind of odd because I thought I could have swore the SH has a uh, um, tilt angle sensor. So all the, you know, all the Hondas, at least the Hondas that I know of, all the fuel injected ones uh, that I've seen, they have a, uh, no, they don't call it a tilt angle, they call it bank angle sensor. So normally when you're, you know, when you're turning and you're leaning, right, you're leaning the bike and it's leaned over, centrifugal force will keep that, uh, so the, if the bike's leaned over, centrifugal force will keep that uh, bank angle, basically it will stay pretty much lean with the bike as well, so more or less it's, very close to the similar angle to the bike, right? So that way, then, then uh, and the reason that where that tilt, that 
uh, bank angle sensor is there is that if you do drop the bike over, because there's no centrifugal force, the sensor will just swing down and it will basically it's supposed to turn off. You know, it's supposed to kill the uh, it's supposed to kill the the engine. Um, but both times uh, I crashed and it was laying on the side and it did, it was still the engine was still running. So that's kind of weird. Um, not sure why. Uh, I wonder if the time that it was you know um, the the first time where the throttle was kind of open. Um, because of that, it might have prevented it from turning off. But the second time, nothing, nothing held it open. At least I didn't, I didn't notice. Anyways, so I, I just killed it off, you know, on the kill switch. Uh, but yeah, so back to the damage. So uh, yeah, so you see all the scratches. Right? See all the scratches there. This right here got indented in a little bit. So uh, and obviously you saw that, and it's all scratched up down here as well on the side. But everything's still running good. Nothing, nothing scratch on the engine, surprisingly. Like right here, really anything. You know, that's that's hardly anything right there. All those little little nicks and nicks and things. That's nothing right there. So no big deal. Uh, the biggest damage, the biggest damage is right here. My headlight, my headlight, the lens here, they it broke. So this piece is gone. There's nothing here. There's nothing here, and you can actually see, see in the reflector, the reflector is inside there is it's gone too so all that's gone probably my guess is a rock or whatever impacted right here just in this spot right here that popped open uh there's a crack right here on the on the on the lens uh that's this plastic cover right here this this part this half of the plastic cover it, it broke off so here's the full cover right here and obviously i put i put packing tape on here i i put like four layers of packing tape on here so it feels it's really solid right now so it feels good um so that's how I, I, you know, and then the light bulb still works. Both both high beam and low beam still works. Uh, it's just you know it's busted up. So so I just ordered a new light on eBay. I bought a used one. It's still freaking expensive, man. So this is a 2010, and it always, only came out in the U.S. for one year. So parts of, parts for it is very difficult to find, if if at all. You know you can still find. I think you can still find belts, and roller weights, and maybe air filters. You know. Uh, I'm not sure about the brake pads anymore. I think the brake pads are, are, not, are not available anymore, but I'm not sure. Uh, th this bike shares the same brake pads as the uh, the Elite 110. So when I ordered the brake pads, I, I put in, uh, you know, I also put in the Elite 110 to see. And uh, and nothing showed up for, if you put it in SH150, nothing shows up, but you put Elite in the Elite 110, the brake pads do show up. And they're the same brake pads, same part number. If you put in, punch in the part number, it might show up, it might not show up. Uh, but anyways, so I, I ordered like a few of them. So uh, I'm not sure if those are even available anymore either. Also that bike as well, only came out in 2010. So both bikes only came out for one year. Uh, so they're both kind of rare in the US. Um, so yeah, so anyways, so I ordered a new one, a used one off of eBay for 80 bucks. Um, that was kind of expensive, but you know, New, a new, a new, just a lens and a reflector is a hundred bucks. Actually, like it's probably like a hundred and ten bucks or something like that. But it doesn't come with anything else. There's nothing like the the wire connection and, and the a wire plug and the black bulb and stuff like that. None of that. It comes with none of that. So the used one I got, I think it comes with all of that. So so uh, at least it come comes with all of that, right? I don't necessarily need all that. I only need you know the lens cover and the and the reflector inside. And actually, that's that's all one piece. Uh oh, this this. This uh, the windshield right here is broken. It actually broke before, but but I I, epoxy, I epoxied it back together, and during that crash, you know, it broke off again. So so whatever little piece of uh, bits of of scooter I left right there in the crash site. So that right there was a tax. You know, that's that's the you know what I call the road tax, or uh, you know better known as a road toll, right? When you're on the road, you gotta pay your toll, right? So I left it, left it all my little parts, my scooter parts to the road gods somewhere in New Mexico. Uh, as far as the bike goes, the bike's still running real good. I still have actually a pretty good amount of tire left, left in here. So that's good right there. I have over, I think over 2000 miles already on these tires so far. And, uh, and they were brand new before you know, leaving home from, for a scooter cannonball. So my, my, from my home to the start of Scooting Cannonball was already 400 miles. So that's 400 miles right there. 
the first day was about 370 or 380 miles I think just shy of 400 miles let's call it 400 miles because I rode around town as, as well uh, second day was uh, I can't remember now but anyways on average cannonball days this year is uh, 400 miles if you, can, you know some days are more than some days are other less like today for example today I rode almost 500 miles oh I did ride 500 miles 509 miles that, that also includes riding around town getting you know getting dinner and all that stuff too uh, but anyways um, yeah so I have you know when I left home I had what what was it 10,000 god now I can't remember what, how much miles I had when I left uh, was it 10,600 or 10,400 but any, anyways, it's uh, thirteen thousand, almost thirteen thousand two hundred now. So, so yeah, so, so quite a you know, over two thousand miles for sure. Uh, you know, once I get done with this, we still have like another thousand miles left. Let's see, today is end of day five, so we still have today six, seven, and eight. Three more days. Each day is about our average four hundred miles, so that's another twelve hundred miles right there. So we're looking at uh, fourteen. Fourteen and a half thousand. Once I'm done, so so basically all together. Let's see, fourteen and a half thousand. I started around ten and a half, so that's about four thousand miles all together for the whole trip. Uh, from from my door, I left home to my door to uh, to the not just the end of Cannonball, but where I'm going to be going after Cannonball. I'm actually going to take this thing down to Florida and leave it in leave it in Florida. Actually, I'm I'm not. I'm more than leaving. I'm actually giving it to my brother, and he lives in Florida, so uh, so it's gonna be his bike. So I need to clean it up and get it to <laughs> to good working order. Get it to good working order and and fix this so that way when he you know when he registers it for Florida and changes the title over, uh, you know the Florida official won't be like oh you can't you know you have to repair this you can't you know if it was California this would not be okay you know you get a ticket for this but. Uh, but I'm not sure how it is in Florida. I think they're a little bit lax compared to California. But uh, but I'm getting it put on a new plate anyways. And everything else works. You know, the main thing is that all the safety stuff works, right? Is the lights work, the signal lights, the brake lights, the, the headlights, the mirrors are there. So so all the safety stuff. And they don't care about they don't care about all these scratches stuff. Now that doesn't matter to them. But anyways, um, yeah. So this bike's been pretty good. Uh, oh, a quick update. I had changed the um, the roll the roller weights, right? So everything on, on this bike is stock, right? Everything on this bike is completely. Oh, the, the, the key is stuck and I can't get it off. There it goes. Everything is completely stock except for the uh, roller weights. If you remember, if you watch my other videos, you remember that I, I changed the roller weights from. Um, see, so there's all my spare parts that, I'm, that I bought with me. So here's the roller weights that I replaced it with, and let's see, I think I bought some spare original roller weights. So here's the original roller weights. So these are original Honda roller weights right here, right? Original Honda roller weights with the with the part numbers on and everything here. And these, the original roller weights are, uh, if I can remember right, they're 12.3, so possibly 12.3, no more than 12.5. I think it was, if I can remember it was 12.3 weight. And these ones are uh, Dr. Pulley's sl sliding weights. 12 grams I had originally tried 13, uh, 11 grams and they were they, the top speed was the same with the 11 grams as the stock but it just revved more and I didn't like that uh, that's good for um, for like city driving and urban driving you know around town but for for something like cannonball or even if you ride a, a, a lot of trips and and, and uh, more distance and backcountry you don't want to be all revvy like that that's no good. Uh, you want to be, you know, you want to keep the revs down a little bit. So 12 gram did that. Uh, what these sliding weights do is they actually open the variator a little bit wider. So the so the belt inside here will uh, will open up more in the front and and squeeze tighter in the back. So that way it, it gears taller. So looking at the face of the roller weight, but not the roller weights, but the variator. Here's a here's an example of the face right here. So, you, so when the once the belt wears, you actually see the belt wear on here, and it goes up. With the stock weight, it only go, it only went up so far. I forget how far away it was now. But it only goes up so far, and there's a little bit of space left. Then with the with the uh, Dr. Pulley slider weights, 12 grams, 
it actually went up about a millimeter and a half so about one sixteenth of an inch higher up than the stock belt and uh, the stock roller weights did so that millimeter and a half you know that about one sixteenth of an inch that right there actually increased my uh, my top speed by five miles an hour so with the stock roller weights and also with this dr pulley 11 gram roller weights when i got to red line and you, you can feel the red line not the, i shouldn't say red line i should say uh, rev limiter when i got to the rev limiter uh with the stock roller weights and the 12 gram dr pulley sliders the rev limiter was at 75 maybe 76 and you could actually hit the rev limiter but with the uh 12 gram dr pulley i actually could hit the rev limiter at 81 miles an hour with the rev limiter so it, it gave me five more miles an hour top top speed with this 12 gram and uh, and as far as like the other speeds go uh it drops the uh you know at, at the same speed it drops the the uh the rev down a little bit so it doesn't rev as high so the the bad thing about that is that is that uh it wants to open it wants to open the variator sooner and that means you're going to be uh, uh at a for, for a given rev, you're going to be at a higher speed. So basically, at the same speed, you're going to be at a lower rev. So that means uh, um, the acceleration is not as good as a, a uh, as the stock or the uh, lighter. But the, the thing is, it's so close that it's not really, you know, I, I could barely notice it. I, I could barely tell. I, there's enough for me to tell, but I could barely tell though. And it's not significant enough uh, to matter, especially back, back you know, back road riding, you know, riding out in the country and such. In the city, you might notice, you know, it might be more of a hassle because you're always at a stop, right? Stoplight and stuff. But, you know, but out on the open road on the countryside, the back roads, man, that lower rev is so much better. It's just nicer. Uh, and it and it gets faster, it rides faster. Anyways, the, the riding lawnmower is coming by. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.